have in exact fields as well. <coughs> okay, mm -hmm. uh, so board members. Um, the only board member online right now is uh, member Jacobs. Okay, great. All right, well, good, good afternoon, everyone. It's officially noon, and I'd like to get today's finance meeting started. <coughs> um, I'd like us to just go around the table for the record and introduce ourselves. New home and board member. <clears throat> Margo Bellamy, board member. MJ Communications. Aurora Finance. Andy Ratliff with budget. Rob Holland, CCO, COO. Uh, George Vitalis, consultant to the district. Corey Ace, Anchor Education Association. Amanda Foster, executive assistant to the board. Sorry. No, no, I didn't know if you wanted to come this way or. Um, I think we'll just leave it at ASD. Yes. I mean, you are part of Team oh. ASD. Uh, Katie Grant, business management. Great. And I'm Kelly Lessons. <clears throat> the Anchorage School Board. Um, okay, so we have a couple of items on today's budget. Um, FY24 budget update seems like a really good standing item. And I think that um, there's a presentation. Yeah, we have a short time. presentation over the budget. And then we'll get into the bond discussion. And that's something that probably yeah. a little more timely than the budget. But um, we do have a few things you want to update on the budget. We'll bring up the slides. All right. It's a little slow right now. Right. We're making a full page. So, uh, really wanted to give you guys an update over our fund balance carryover, how we ended FY22, um, kind of where we're at with the vacancies and how that impacts the 23 budget, and then go over the timeline for our the rest of the budget preparation for next year. Uh, then we'll get into the bond discussion and then maybe even discuss. I think there's a question on curriculum costs. We can maybe just flush out a little bit more of what we want out of there because we don't really have anything as to facilitate that discussion at this point. Um, so the next slide should show our, uh, this is our, our funding, you know, we kept this in there just to make the public aware of where, how we got to this point and where we have this big gap, um, but it's really just the inflation, not having inflation adjusted BSA and plugging those holes with either uh, one-time money, some budget cuts, or federal money in those orange bars. Um, certainly not, don't want to belabor this again as we go through this a couple times a week. <laughs> so, um, you guys understand it all pretty well. Yes. Yeah. So, um, again, you know, we are the six, $68 million shortfall we have is directly tied to us not being able to have any inflation proof BSA up until this point and all that one-time money that we've stacked to keep operations going. I'm going to pause. Sorry, I forgot that member Jacobs is online and Dora, member Wilson has joined us as well. And the superintendent. And the superintendent. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, so the next slide we can go on is uh, our general fund carryover. And Amanda, I don't know if you can make this a little bit yeah. smaller to get the full page in there. But big enough where I can read it. That's not going to work. Okay, we can just go section by section. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, anyway, that middle part is uh, when did our beginning undesignated fund balance about 57 million, which includes our unassigned amount of 31 million and 25 million for our bond rating, which is uh, funds we hold in order to get better interest rates on when we go out to sell bonds. This agreement we have with the city. Uh, our revenue and expenditures, we ended up being about a million and a half to the good uh, with the loss of enrollment. And subsequent loss of revenue there, uh, we actually turned out pretty good. With, but a lot of that's due to vacancies and other unspent funds that we had. Uh, but overall, we did really well. Came in uh, at a positive increase to fund balance. So at the end of the end of the day, we have about 36 million in unassigned fund balance, about 25 million for bond rating. Still, if we scroll down a little bit, the kind of the salient point of this in the green, that very bottom line where we have the amount above, below. The 8% board minimum, about $13 million, is how much undesignated fund balance we have that we could possibly use with the and still maintain board policy to carry forward to FY24, assuming FY23 shakes out okay and we don't need to use any of that to address any shortfalls. Um, we haven't really delved into the projections for FY23 yet. We're still waiting on to get some better payroll information. But the students seem to have returned in about the amount that we have uh, anticipated. So we don't anticipate having a revenue shortfall there um, and no kind of real outlying 
expenditure things that we're tracking at this point. I'm um, sorry, Andy, did you say that 13 million was what we could use? Um, okay. And maintain within and board policy. <laughs> yeah, and that doesn't okay. account for anything that we might earn or if we have any gains in this current year. Um, there are some factors in this current year that uh, we were planning on, like we got a $2 million reimbursement from the Emergency Connectivity Fund, which is uh, would be a reimbursement for all these IT devices that we bought, like the Chromebooks, um, part of it up to like, you can get up to like $400 for per device for those and for the Apple uh, or devices we got for our teachers to get reimbursed for that. So that came in. So we think, you know, our revenue side is gonna be, will be pretty good there, but we need to get some more data before we can project out our expenditures accurately. Um, but we ended about 10.2%. That's kind of the metric we've used uh, for, and that's a percentage of our undesignated fund balance divided into our total expenditures. So that's uh, above or about where we'd like it to be. Um, we ended really well. And it's about 13 million that right now we could put towards the next year's deficit if all things being equal for 23. Thank you. I think Member Jacobs had a hand up. See this. Uh, thank you, Member Lessons. So, quick question, Andy. Um, I think we talked about this in governance um, last year. Do board policy currently and statute or applicable law align in terms of the required uh, percentage we need in reserves? I thought we got that change. I have to go look because it used to be um, the board policy used to reference 2% below the state maximum. So and the state maximum was always 10%, um, and then it got increased to 25% uh, during the pandemic. And I think it's might be, they might've taken that cap off altogether. But I mean, we'd never even get close to the 25%, but that's where it's at now. Um, but I think the board policy references the 8% minimum now is explicit versus the 2% uh, below the state maximum. Um, I can go back and check that though, but I'm pretty sure we got that changed in policy. Thank you. That's my recollection as well, but I appreciate it. Any other questions right now? Okay. All right. Um, so moving on, this was a listing I got from HR of all the active position vacancies. Uh, grand total about 206. This is all funding sources. So you'll see student nutrition, um, a lot of teachers, subs. It's, kind of the gamut of employees that we have. What you're not gonna see on here, which actually increases this by probably about another 100 positions is the, uh, the custodians. We only list one job opening, the same with trans or bus transportation. You see that as two. I think we have uh, an attendant and a driver position constantly listed because um, we always need those, but there's 50-ish open position still between ASD and Reliant, uh, and then some 40 and change in the custodial positions. So there's another 100 or so positions that aren't necessarily listed on this report. <clears throat> but how this translates into savings for FY23 for our, our funding is um, we do estimate uh, an amount of attrition that we think is gonna occur just by virtue of positions being vacant throughout the year or people waiving medical insurance, things like that. that uh, and that's about 25 million. So really there's gonna be some analysis that we need to do, do to go see which of these positions, how long they're gonna be open, how long they think they'll be open. So how much money we're really gonna save by these vacancies throughout the year as compared to the 25 million or so we've already planned on um, not spending essentially. So that's kind of where it shakes out. And we're gonna to have to, it does take a little bit of time for us to do that. Right now we've only run one uh, teacher payroll. Um, we run those monthly for between September and June. So we do have to get some, a little bit more fidelity on to make sure all those costs are in the right buckets and go review where all, all staffing is. Because mistakes do happen, people get in the wrong accounts and I'm still pushing all those, um, you know, we allocated 477 FTE for the ARP <clears throat> grant. So getting all those employees migrated over to the right accounts, is, it, it just takes some time. Um, so 
we're hopeful by you know November, early December is when we'll have some updated projections, and that'll correspond with when we present our pro forma budget uh, to the board to detail out a more accurate vision of what our budget gap looks like. So I can't really see the grand total. What, what is that final? So the left side is 406 is the grand total. Okay. 406, yeah. But that doesn't include another 100 or so okay. thus and uh, custodial positions. Okay, we'll move along if there's no questions. So the timeline, um, at least from my office, we're going to release the pro forma budget, which is really here's our expected revenue based on updated demographic projections. Here's how much our expenditures to keep the same level of services we're, what we're doing now um, and what that uh, budget gap, resulting budget gap is. So really we just try to gather information, get this report produced based on uh, updated enrollment and produce, send that to you guys in the first meeting in December and go through it there. Uh, hopefully we'll have our projections for FY23 started there so we can know um, to what level of additional fund balance we may or may not have to push towards to help offset some of those uh, cuts as well. Um, so I think along that same timeline, November, December, we'll be discussing more potential budget cuts or areas we could possibly have reductions um, and then trying to get the board to agree on those potential reductions before we produce it. Uh, that kind of gets back to like school closures, for instance. We It takes a lot of planning and a lot of staff work to go through and make these uh, any sort of school closures or repurposing. Um, so we want to have that pretty accurate once we get it into our budget bill. I mean, that's, that's just a time consuming thing. Um, Can I ask a question? Of course. How, how do you want to see board consensus on these things if they're not going to be voting issues? I mean, are these straw polls that we're going to be? I would think so, but then, I mean, I guess we could do it or in just a, conversation and you know, so-and-so said this. And or we could provide buckets of different options and see what the local board is on the different options and then collect feedback. I mean, we could do, we could even do like a more official thing with memos consensus. too. That's the thing is it would be good change. We don't always stick with yeah. our consensus. So I, just knowing that, we just have to. Yeah. And even if we formalized it with vote on a memo, you still could go back and live in the budget. That's the yeah. thing. Is okay. Even if whether it's a straw poll or a formalized memo, I think you guys would still have that flexibility at the end in February to make those changes. But I understand that you would like to understand. We would like, like to get you know, some, <laughs> at least some semblance of the will of the board on that, but knowing things can change. So um, again, our projections hopefully in December, just to determine that fund balance and get the, you know, uh, we'll work on that again in you know, December through December and January and have a final recommendation at the end of January when we produce our budget book. Um, so we'll release that at the end of January. You guys will hopefully approve that in February and then we'll go to the assembly on the first Monday in March. A lot of work to do between now. <laughs> any, um, any questions online? All right, uh, the next slide is just a recap of our our budget deficit monitor, things we've talked about uh, with the board. And this is from the work session on uh, last Tuesday. I, so, I have a question. It was my understanding from the last work session that the administration would not be pushing for changes to the elementary immersion or sort of K through eight immersion, but that's still on here is that just reflecting that it's, it has been discussed yeah this is everything we've discussed um, okay certainly not everything we discussed will actually be implemented uh, yeah i did happen to have a technical question about that the price for immersion overall did that include your official work no mm -hmm. So we have, yeah, just another view of, you know, just kind of keep this top of mind. Here's the things we've talked about. Here's kind of the relative cost of them. But again, you know, certainly not it, a recommendation from the administration or uh, anyone else at, at this point. So, but yeah, just to give you an idea how much these programs cost. Okay. The next one, I believe we start on the bond discussion. I'll let Rob take over from here. Okay, thanks, Sandy. So <clears throat> what we're recommending is uh, a $37.8 million bond proposal for uh, 
spring of 23. Um, and this, this prioritizes progress against the, uh, the deferred maintenance that the district has. Uh, this is all built around an emphasis on safety and security and, and roof repairs. So um, there, there's 10 separate total school buildings affected by this. Uh, and I'm not counting those schools that get the camera upgrades outside the building. I'm counting things that actually affect the environment for kids uh, in, a, in a measurable way. So roofs, um, safety upgrades to the um, academic areas within Betty Davis East High School, uh, and then the secure vestibules. So we're talking about 10 schools affecting approximately 4,500 students uh, would benefit from this bond. Um, I think it's, this also represents a return to once yearly smaller bonds that are, are more laser focused where, where we want them to be more easily packaged for public consumption. Any questions thus far? Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. And um, when we say 4,500 students, that's just within one academic year, right? That these improvements would be 4,500 students for- Forever. Forever, fact, for, yeah. for 30 so, to 60 years. Or I mean, like, I don't know how long, I mean- 60 might be a stretch, okay. but so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so, no. so, I mean- I get what you mean, we're yes. getting We're impacting more students than Absolutely. just, so if we were to yeah. break this down into- That's a great point. Per student, per mm -hmm. year cost, it becomes mm -hmm. a much, uh, the impact becomes the much cost larger. The cost benefit becomes much better for the community. You're mm -hmm. correct. Okay. Yes. Okay, slide, please. <clears throat> or I'm not sure what's next in the deck, but the next slide was the, the actual, the actual yeah. projects that would be on there. So now we, we just break down into some detail about those schools. We see secure vestibules. Uh, there's the camera upgrades I mentioned that affect a handful of schools on the exterior, of, you know, uh, as far as monitoring. And then there are the roof projects, College Gate the uh, Betty Davis East High School, the academic area upgrades, prototypical roofs. Uh, these are the first two schools out of um, nine prototypical schools, which are, will require roof redesign replacement. And then the, the warehouse purchasing facility uh, needs a new roof. So this is stopping the leaks and making schools more secure. Any uh, questions on, on any particulars here? Could you, so the 33%, is that reflecting the cost of camera upgrades has gone up by 33%? Is that what is the 32% referred to? Actually, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That is a, uh, I believe that is where it is in the design phase. Oh, the okay, so it's a status, yeah. it's not a price. Yeah, okay. yeah. it's not, it does not represent anything about the $800,000. And um, Edie has her hand up, so she might have something. Oh, she to might say have a better. That, yeah, so thank you. We'll go ahead and let her. Yeah. Speak. Uh, sorry about that. It's actually um, there was, if you remember the, what we had proposed for 2023 and 2024, both had cameras, jobs on it, and what we just did a seven, basically a 70-30 split. So that's 33 percent of the camera money that was uh, yeah. originally allocated or needed for those to replace those systems. If that makes sense. And the other two thirds was so incorporated into what we just approved. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So about one third of the camera. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And Member Jacobs also has a question. Go ahead, Member Jacobs. Thank you. Um, so a question for you, Mr. Holland, I believe. Um, the prototypical roof projects that are on there, that's that's a different process than um, uh, the, the board and administration have talked about um, being more proactive with um, attacking some of the, the minor leaks um, that we have in roofs across the district um, by using some sort of relatively new technology um, that makes those roofs more viable for you know potentially decades to come. And there's a similar project where we can extend the life of boilers, as I understand it. Um, I want to first check my understanding that the prototypical roof projects aren't the same thing as those. And then assuming that, that, that I'm correct there, um, my request, I guess, is if 
Um, I'm interested in hearing from administration, and I don't need an answer today, um, but hearing from administration as to what it might look like to incorporate some of those projects onto this bond, um, as well as the CIP with the thought that um, we knew that going into last year after we approved the bond prop for this past April that our um, amount of debt retired each year was going to drop significantly in years to come. And at some point there here in the next six year CIP period, there might be a time where we need to bond for an amount that's higher than what we're retiring. Um, I think part of that equation can be those more proactive uh, maintenance type projects that demonstrate clear value um, to taxpayers um, and help those bond propositions get over, um, over the finish line. And so that's my desire is to, to hear from administration as to what it might look like sometime between now and when the um, CIP and this particular bond proposition are up as an action item, um, how we can kind of incorporate that into our strategic vision for capital improvements. So thank you. Sure, so um, first off, you are correct on the prototypical roof. So I'll restate what I, what I heard, what I believe I heard you say, you are correct. They are not part of a roof upgrade or component replacement of a roof system, but they are actually a redesign and rebuild of a roof system in that there was a flawed design in the past of prototypical roofs at the nine schools that were built in the 90s, elementary schools, and that the administration has completed the commission of a design with appropriate engineering firms to fix that problem. The next stage would be to start to build out and actualize those repairs and that's where you see Kassoon and Kincaid as the first two out of the gate, yes. And then I'll, I'll prepare more information. Uh, Member Jacobs, I, I may have a couple of questions for you on that um, as follow-up, which, which, which I can communicate to you. But I, I think part of what you're asking would then potentially add to the existing amount of a bond proposal, perhaps this year. Uh yeah, so Mr. Holland, if I might, yeah, uh, I'm I'm interested in dialoguing more with the administration about it. Um, I want to make sure that we keep the amount reasonable given the the sizable amount of investment we just appropriated towards um, capital projects, um, specifically, um, you know, things like roofs and boilers. Um, so I, I'm not sure if it's an addition to or if there's um, something that we can discuss about um, swapping a year. Um, I'm open to conversation about it, but that's something I want to be proactive about prior to us voting and I definitely wanted to work with administration on any potential um, amendment, but especially looking towards the CIP, I personally see value in adding some of those more um, component replacement um, projects to future bond proposals, especially if we're going to have to exceed um, the amount of debt we're retiring with, uh, with the bond proposal. Um, I think that helps make that case that we're being proactive, we're saving millions of dollars um, and we're allowing taxpayers um, that relief. So. That's the conversation we can have, but I wanted to flag that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, so just to supplement that a bit, Member Jacobs is discussing component replacement, components of a building system, multiple building systems, such as a boiler, as an expensive component of a heating and ventilation system. That's the heart of that system, and that may be one to two million dollars, for instance. Okay, component replacement or retubing of boilers, which we just did at West and Bartlett last summer. We have more of that planned. So I believe uh, we'll continue those discussions with you, Member Jacobs. And I, I believe I, I, I hear Member J Jacobs asking about the possible pulling in selectively of some of those projects off the CSP into nearer term, nearer term bond plan that we could continue that discussion. Uh, as, a, as a thought on the 23 bond, um, some thought did go into the size of this bond as being something that is strategic in its size. And uh, Member Jacob said it well when he said, <coughs> in view of the fact that we've just had a, a sizable capital infusion, which we are using for a lot of shovel ready mm -hmm. projects, that this bond is a reasonable size and that it would reestablish our momentum with the community uh, as, to, as to getting back to yearly bonds and that those bonds would have a, a high impact, a good impact and a very high chance of passing. 
Yes. Is there a way that ASD could conduct a survey? Of, I mean, there was, I knew that we've had, there was a survey they went into bond preparation last year. We had a post bond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any, any way that we could get a, a survey to inform the board of, you know, what is the likelihood of, of this of this bond package or a similar bond package to pass, um, you know, given its size, um, perhaps if it is more aggressive, as Member Jacobs was suggesting. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what all of the questions yeah. would entail, but is is a is a survey a possibility by some point in time? Yep. So we had a we did a survey last year, mm -hmm. right? And it said it was too big. Right. And not likely to pass. Right. So that would be the haste. So yeah. Whatever it was. We did. That is correct, uh, Madam President. So I believe uh, Member Lessons is asking would there be value in repeating such a survey now? The reason we didn't go down that route, at least at this point in time, is because of the very palatable size of this ask mm -hmm. and that the survey the would, would, be, would give us more sensitive information about a much larger, or in the case of this last spring, uh, actually an unprecedented size, which we had we had never gone there before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as far as timing to get this particular bond proposal in, um, I can't speak with any accuracy as a final word, but I don't know that there would be time to actually conduct a Hayes research mm -hmm. survey between now and when this bond has to actually this memo and and right because we're talking about action. something that would be a non-action yeah. item on. The 18th, correct. An action on the fifth, the first, the first week of November. The first week of November, correct. So that the timing to submit this, uh, which is still the first week of December, all of that has to be complete before that. But, but again, okay. Did you have a question? No. no. Okay, Member Jacobs. Oh, and I'm sorry. Also, uh, Member Higgins is online as well. Yeah, thank you, Member Lesson. So, uh, just to, I just wanted to make sure, and, I, and Mr. Holland, I appreciate um, yourself, um, administration as a whole, for preparing this on on such short notice. I know we kind of called an audible um, with where we wanted to head um, regarding a potential passage of a 23 bond proposition. I just want to make my my position clear, and that I appreciate the size of this bond proposition, um, and I I am also. Uh, nervous about increasing it, um, even modestly. Um, the The conversation I'm looking towards is more, um, you know, if if there's um, a strategic vision that we can have that starts to attack some of these um, preventative maintenance projects um, or these component replacement projects, if you will. Um, given that we we know we have 800 million plus in deferred maintenance, waiting until roofs have already failed. Um, isn't sustainable given that we don't have um, bond debt reimbursement at this point and we are trying to stay under uh, the amount of debt retired with our bond propositions and so I, I don't see um, a better option besides starting to be more proactive and getting those high value proposition projects um, prioritized um, here in the near future as part of the CIP so that's something that I have a desire and I'm looking forward to more conversation um, and, and we can definitely connect offline Mr. Holland thank you sir. Thank you, Member Jacobs. And I think the prioritizing part per se is relatively easy for our CPNC department. We'll work together with them on that. Um, and the rest is just a question of how much, how soon. Uh, I, I appreciate your support in that it would be good, good for the community in that we're protecting nearly $2.5 billion of publicly owned assets in that we would try to get ahead of um, the growing amount of deferred maintenance. And then that we have inflation, that that inflation pertains to all of that deferred maintenance because that inflation tide lifts all boats in the harbor equally. So thank you. And Member Wilson has her hand up as well. Okay, great. Go ahead, Member Wilson. Yes, I, I just wanted to also share that I would support a reasonable size bond. Um, I've learned my lesson the, the hard way about requesting an overwhelming size bond from the voters. And I think it's really important that we reestablish that support for, of the from the community um, with the next bond proposition. So 
Again, I would support a reasonable size bond. Um, and, and this, what I'm looking at currently looks reasonable to me um, with the safety and security. And, and as you said, stopping the leaks, providing sa uh, increasing safety and security for our students, I think is um, a good way to approach the community. I, I also wanted to throw in there that I'm, I am interested in learning more about um, how we can plan ahead regarding our component replacement projects um, to save money in the long run, but also uh, secure our buildings in the short term. Thank you. Great. Any other board members have any other questions <clears throat> regarding the 2023 bond proposal? I think that's the only that's the end of our presentation that okay. we have for you guys. We wanted to leave enough time to discuss this uh, bond proposition just because it was last minute, put it together really quickly, and it's coming to the board rip on Tuesday. So this is our best opportunity to sit down and discuss it as a group. And I wanted to shore up what um, Mr. Ratliff just said. The mechanics of putting it on paper was last minute, but we've been talking about kind of the ideal size and nature what of, of this bond proposal actually for some number of months. I mean, it, it reflects the, what we would, yes. The plan I that need. we were briefed yes. weeks mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. Um, so I don't think there are any surprises here. Yeah, it was certainly not intended. We didn't foresee any surprises either. And, yeah. and I don't think there'll be any surprise or any you know, gasp moments for the community. I think this is, this may be a smaller bond than many people would anticipate. But again, we factored in to, to earlier points made by board members uh, today that we just accepted and, and are about to spend a, a large amount of money infused by the state, one-time money. Which is yes. really a form of relief for our taxpayers. It is, right? That, is Those it, are, it is also this was, these are state mm -hmm. funds yeah. and Anchorage taxpayers Yes. Will not have to have a relationship with a bond. <laughs> well put. Assuming um, they pass. The assuming bond. they, yeah. Uh, be, be, and these projects are going to be done without increasing our overall bond debt. I think. I think the key here to remember is that these projects are projects that have to be done. They've been mm -hmm. scheduled for quite a long period of time, and they're protecting the asset the buildings. And that's why they're on the top of the priority list. And so if we didn't have this infusion of funds, the taxpayers would be paying for it uh, one way or the other, because it have to, they have to get done. So. Yeah. So I think this particular bond proposal in my opinion <clears throat> completes that win-win combination of the state infusion and what we would ask the public for uh, in, in 2023, mm -hmm. given that the last two years did not have a bond. And so there, there's also a cumulative amount of bond debt retirement in, that, in mm -hmm. those years. That feels very tidy. Um, <laughs> so I guess, okay. So the messaging, I might, you might have already talked about it. The messaging and selling of the bond, if, you know, if we are going to do this. Do we have any thoughts about what that's going to look like, how we're going to navigate that process? We have started to think about that. Um, Madam President, we will engage um, a resource that we didn't have to the extent we have now, which is our new and improved communication yes. partner. Yeah, I mean, to your oh. left there. Yeah, uh, much the same as the messaging went out in terms of impact, like to get bus drivers. We saw the effect of that, uh, a, a big upwell of support from the community. Uh, we feel like we've got a package we can really sell for all of the right reasons, and that we're very anxious to do that pending board approval. There was, thank you for that question. If I can just follow up, you know, um, at maybe the previous board meeting, someone uh, testified and said, Where are the yard signs um, for these? I mean, mm -hmm. are we? Are we going to be able to re-envision a messaging campaign then in, in ways that might capture the public's attention? 
I would hope. I mean, I mean, I don't know that yard signs are the end all, but I think I that, end, yeah. yeah. How, how I mean, can we? Nothing's been finalized. I mean, discussions have started, mm -hmm. um, but we're definitely taking a look at what we did last year and what we can do to improve that. Mm -hmm. And those organizations or people that want to be involved in that mm -hmm. process, we're definitely um, uh, to have those discussions and have them involved. So maybe some partnership. Mm -hmm. there, there really is a. I mean, we're not. We can't tell people how to vote, but right. we can give them the facts to help inform mm -hmm. their vote. Mm -hmm. So we can't like overstep our get out of our lane. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm glad to hear yeah. that there will be partners. Yeah. And, well, look, yeah, the discussions have already started. I thought it was great to have the big signs on the schools that were out, that were on the bond. Um, yeah, because you do yeah. drive by and mm -hmm. you realize, right. okay, but, this yeah, is we're going to clean up. They, they need some maintenance, so I'm going to clean this up. Great. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so where does this little demo do? Okay, yeah. Um, well, thanks for the question, Member Holloman. So where does this leave Inlet View? Inlet View remains on the CIP, which you all have seen as a board memo this week, uh, positioned for a bond in 2024 in the same manner that we, that administration recommended it last year. We still maintain that it belongs on a, a 2024 bond. Do, do we see problems at NYU that are going to worsen? If you're looking at 2024 and the bond, you're looking at I would say, 2025 or 26. Or yeah, not to not to uh, not to downplay any problems at NYU. We would like it built as well. Hence our our vigor and our strategy around getting that design process finished, uh, which we did. Uh, we believed in that design from day one. So that part of the mission is complete. It sets us up for our recommended position on the 2024 bond. The best way I could answer your question is it's hard to predict any, any failure or, or deterioration of any building systems any more or less at any one building. Right. Because our view is always the entire district, right? So uh, I don't want to get too granular. I can speak to some things that have already been fixed, such as the perception of leaking sewage, which was a one-time break that was fixed last November and never continued after it was fixed. So in that respect, so no. So why is the fence up? The fence is, will, will come down. It, down. it may already be down. I haven't checked this because week. Because that feeds into the. No, they just hadn't put no. the new asphalt oh, on. Oh, the asphalt, okay. I, I believe, now they have started site prep to put the new asphalt in, for instance, two weeks ago. Okay. That asphalt will be, before freeze up and the fence will be gone. Yeah. I'm sorry, did that answer the question enough? Um, or? A pretty good idea. Okay. I mean, I, I know sometimes we can see things coming. Sometimes we can see them coming. And if I might add one more thing that I would like to mm -hmm. take a little license here. I said that we do want it built. So at no point are we suggesting, you know what, maybe we should just fix this or put a new roof on or put a vestibule on and call it good. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we want it built, yeah. but we really believe that it lives on a 2024 bond. Yeah. I, and I'm thinking more along the lines of are we going to wind up spending millions of dollars? In, in between now and then, we yeah. Mm -hmm. in a couple of years mm -hmm. like Nothing like that is anticipated. Any follow up questions online? Um, seeing and hearing none. I guess we can move on to item number B3 financial needs for outstanding curriculum instruction adoptions. And uh, this was a question that I raised just to ask to put it on the board's radar. Are there items that we that have a financial a fiscal note that we need to be aware of as we seek to improve educational outcomes? Um, I don't know if that's an easy answer or a complicated answer. Uh, I suspect it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's one we definitely need more time to gather. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, would you mind elaborating on, on the question? Is it with regards to curricular materials and anticipated textbook needs or yeah. in that regard? Going I mean, I know year? that we have a, um, at some point, maybe over the, some point over the last year, um, the board was provided five, three to five year 
calendar of sort of ongoing, you know, whether you're talking about math or language arts or, you know, so whatever the science, you know, curricular programs, skills, right? yeah, I'm sure it is, right? You know, things are reviewed and they're piloted, they're adopted. And there was an email that the board received um, at some point within the last week or two that caught my attention and suggested we might be behind on some of our adoptions. And I don't know the extent to which that is or is not true, but it seems like something that if we are purchasing, that it might be irrelevant. This would be a relevant space to have that conversation. And if it's too early to do that, then we can flag it for later, but I, I want to use the space to engage in that. Yeah, it's hopefully in the context of the questions. Now okay. I think we'll be in a position to do some research okay. and work collaboratively with teaching and learning to clarify. Okay. Yeah, so we generally, from the finance perspective, we don't know this is like the four or five year out and how much they're going to need for those or when the uh, current adoption might expire or phase out. Okay. Like we have the Saxon, it's no longer being produced. Okay. Um, so, how to handle that? There's, can there be things like that that come up that we can work with okay. teaching and learning and try to get a list of what they're working on and anticipate a job? Okay. And we certainly don't have it all budget. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Um, I will note that Dora, oh, Dora, member Wilson, great, go ahead. So I'm I'm just curious the the pat the last question the neat financial needs for outstanding curriculum wouldn't wouldn't that be more relevant for a, an, a request for information and and that might be an RFI I've already documented great right. add that to the RFI list okay okay great um okay so item C on the agenda is upcoming meetings and I just wanted to flag for everyone's attention that after consultation with um, Amanda Foster, we are going to pivot the November and December finance meetings uh, to avoid the general leadership, which is mm. taking place uh, today and would have will be taking place in, in the future November should we not December, change. So yeah. the next upcoming meeting, the amended meeting time will be uh, November 2nd is going to be our next finance date and that will not overlap with general leadership. This it's a Wednesday also at noon, oh, so okay. it's about it's, I think it's a week earlier. It's a week earlier and same for December. And the same for December. The yeah, mm -hmm. instead of December fourteenth, it'll be December seventh. Yep. And we didn't foresee other conflicts. No, not for the, um, the, the general leadership. Not general leadership. planned through I believe almost I think through March, and okay. there's no conflicts then, and then we can um, look when those get scheduled to okay. make sure. Will be nimble. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Are there future topics from the committee that you'd like us to present on? That's a great question. Are there other other topics of interest to board member to committee members, members Wilson and Higgins, and any board member? Not at this time. Mm -hmm. Just the curriculum stuff that that can. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then following up on the position. I'm sorry. <laughs> the vacancy. Oh. All right, great. Well, I think then I, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn mm -hmm. nice and early. Seven. All right. I move to adjourn. Or a second, whatever you need. <laughs> We are adjourned. We've we got a couple of them here in the room. All right. Thank you, everyone.